Friday afternoon, 4.20 p.m. Smoke them if you got them. That's a fun thing to say every 4.20. Drink them if you got them, 5 o'clock. And really advocating some sort of probably irrational behavior. Consume when you need to have consumption, baby, based off your medicinal needs. Or at 4.20 p.m. Smoke it if you got it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Because Cannabis. I am B.C. Wayman. This is Dustin Kava, Wayward Media, wayward.media, uh, your favorite cannabis-centric place of conversations. Got a fun one today. Looking forward to chatting with our guest. Uh, before we do that, though, I only get to talk to Dustin really every Friday. We've been really bad about communicating between shows, so really quite have. literally, if we're going to break town that fourth wall. Uh, I talked to Dustin like 20 minutes before each show, and that's it. Dustin, how are you? We just got to catch up a little bit. How you doing, man? I'm doing really good. Uh, just stubbed my toe before the show, and I will say that the lobby with us before we've been going live – starting to feel like a like a frat house wow. it's starting to feel like uh like i'm walking into this I, i'm enjoying it actually it's kind of it's 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 nice it, it kind of gives me this nostalgia feeling nostalgia and feeling fun conversations it is it, it's you know what there's there doesn't need to be seriousness all the time. And we do talk about patience and we do talk about things that really do matter and can make a difference. But at the same point, this is life, you know, like life is, I like that you and I get to be in the moment sometimes. And it's, it's amazing. It's really allowing me to enjoy things a lot more. So the 20 minutes that I get with you before a show is actually feels like sometimes a day I get with some other people, you know? Oh, well, that is such a sweet thing for you to say, Dustin Kava. I do appreciate that. Uh, if you want to hear more of these really kind and gentle and encouraging conversations and patient conversations and silly cannabis cannabis conversations, easy for me to say, uh, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click that subscribe button right below us. Uh, brand new shows every Friday, every single Friday, 4.20 p.m. We are also on audio. We're on YouTube on Fridays, our channel, Wayward Media, Wayward.media. Follow us socially at Meet WM, M E E T W M. That's Meet WM. I've actually started posting, Dustin, fist bump to me. So we actually got some social content going. We got Kathy Reader a couple of weeks ago, one of our favorite shows, uh, Gabrielle Dion from MedicateOH.com on last week's show. This week's show, after so much news, and I feel like, by the way, if you strip across the subcontext of what you just said, Dustin, about all those shows that matter and all those shows that are serious, uh, and then you talk about our guest coming. Are you saying that our guest, Kevin <laughs> Roche, are you saying, Dustin, that our guest doesn't matter, like his points aren't serious, or because he is more of a uh, you know, happier kind of goofy fellow that we shouldn't take this show with such uh, gravitas? Actually, you know what? It's a it, – in me – Kevin is the perfect metaphor to how I would want to raise and teach my children. Okay. So, wow. and, and, so there is, there is something to this. That's like, my son would never learn anything if he wasn't having fun doing it. If he couldn't instill some type of like, yo, we know this is a serious topic, but life ain't that serious all the time. Like you can enjoy this thing. I think that's how you actually learn. That's when the stuff starts getting retained. That's when you start wanting to show up again. That's when it's not so much a chore to learn or a job to learn. And it's more like it can become this passion. And so to me, you know, being in, you know, some of the things at the Cleveland School of Cannabis and that with Kevin, I, he has that ability to get you to, to, to enjoy what the hell you're learning. Wow, so much complimentary stuff. That I'm kind of backhanded, by the way. A little bit of both. How you doing, Kevin? That that was far nicer than um, I probably deserved. Thank you, yes, Dustin. For sure. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. There's not much in life that is worth being really that serious about. Like, honestly, I think one of the biggest things, the biggest mistake people make all the time is they take themselves seriously. They take themselves too seriously. Like they, they want to pretend they're a bit like a big, important deal. And it's like, you're no, no, I've always <laughs> used the old, uh, I, we're all I, dying at the same amount of time, right? <laughs> this, this silliness is actually a cloak for a deep existentialism. <laughs> like we're all dying. So what, why are we, what are you going to be proud of all the time? I'm already <laughs> mentally ill. I don't need to deal with your shit. <laughs> 
I have always used this analogy when I teach classes, and I've said it in class a few times, and I don't think it sits well. It sits better when you're kind of doing this and kind of chatting and such that uh, a boss, right? The boss, the person that you fear when they come down into the room and you get all nervous, they have occasionally and will in the future eat some really spicy burritos and have explosive diarrhea, like shit running down their backside, onto the <laughs> toilet, under the seat. The most powerful of people still have digestible issues sometimes. So they are quite simply humans. It is nothing George to be Washington worried about and scared about. Quite a few times I'm well aware. I mean, <laughs> you didn't make it from babyhood to presidenthood without that happening numerous times. No, been there, nope, done no that. No one did. Nope, the emperors of Rome, god kings <laughs> of the ancient past. Poop their oh. pants. They all welcome to the show. We're talking poop. We're talking cannabis. Uh, it's a lot of things happening here today. Actually, I believe uh, we could really transition. I believe a good, solid, like fertilizer full of human poop. Would human poop make an excellent fertilizer, uh, yeah. Kevin Roche? Yeah, actually, it was used in the Middle Ages during uh, Northwestern Europe, specifically like in the Anglosphere. They used to call it night soil in the 14, 1300s. And there was a guy whose whole job was to scoop the poop for the village and then turn that to like a medieval processing center where they would turn that into fertilizer. So yes, it's actually excellent fertilizer. <laughs> people say that people aren't hiring. There's not good jobs out there in the world today. You could go poop on someone's cannabis plant. Hey man, you could. <laughs> and we're always looking for night soil diggers, you know? We're always looking for wheelbarrow pushers <laughs> over at the night. It's just task-oriented jobs and the process that has to happen in medieval times, right? Listen, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. There's a whole bunch of terrible things I can tell you about that. <laughs> but this is a cannabis show, right? <laughs> it sure is. Kevin uh, Kevin Roche uh, from the Cleveland School of Cannabis. You're one of the teachers there. I've gotten to know you. You've been on uh, Wayward Planet as well. But uh, into the school, I've gotten to know you over the last few years. A couple of things. You know, first, bringing you on. One of the reasons I had to talk to you, I think most recently, is for the very first time, and we'll get to cannabis in a second, but I need to get both of your opinions on it. We can apply it to cannabis education sure. on virtual training. So for the very first time, let me just ask you this. And Kevin, I'm going to assume you wore one because I saw you in the virtual landscape. Blew my mind. Uh, yeah, Dustin, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a technology guy. I assume you've worn a VR headset before. Yes. yes. I wore one for the very first time two days ago. Two days ago, very first time I put on a VR headset. It was very bizarre. And we're working with something in the Cleveland School of Cannabis. And so let's do this. And then we'll build into how Kevin popped up giant on my screen, just huge on the middle of a giant wall of cannabis. Kevin tells me about cord management of all things. So yeah, it's uh, important. It's safety. It is, it is safety. So the Cleveland School of Cannabis is working on this new virtual reality training uh, aspect, right? So they go to facilities. I happen to be touring Galenus in Akron, one of the benefits of coming to the school, put on this VR headset, and now I am literally walking through Galenus in Akron, walking through the facility, walking through it and you know, moving forward. And then what they've built in is on each sections of the wall, you can click and it's like a little box. Would you like to learn more? And it's a, there's a thing in a menu system still being worked on. And I click it and I click on this highlighted cord, like a video game and like highlights. And it's like, oh, what should this thing be? And this happened to be an extension cord. I click that again, and then boom, Kevin Roche pops up and starts to give me a two and a half minute speech about virtual training. Dustin, just think about that. Is that a cool idea? I mean, where are you at? We're to, we're giving tours of cultivation centers and then little educational like things, but it's like being in Blade Runner, like these video screens that pop up on the wall. It was crazy, Dustin. Uh, I mean, you don't understand. This is running deep in the the blood of the family here, my, my my personal family. My mom was on the forefront of technology like 30 years ago. Her, she worked into the very, very immediate stages of the first remote controls, universal remote controls. So like at the time you had seven remotes working all your devices. And, you know, my mom's best friend's husband actually invented the universal remote control. He would, they were the first. And my mom was the one selling it, you know, going to the Super Bowl and shit. But she was at the forefront of technology 30 years ago. She was experimenting with VR 30 years ago. And, you know, like she was also looking at 3D TVs 25 years ago. And like, you know, the, the type of stuff that has been in my thought process has been literally my entire existence. And then even training as I had my Google Glass and stuff like that, even before complete immersion, um, I was seeing the uh, 
I was seeing what could happen with this idea of extra information that pops up when I am doing a specific task and how much more that adds to the value of whatever that task I'm doing and how much it keeps me focused. And so there's value all around. I think that it's an absolute must in the coming 20 years. But I think that there is still not this idea of providing us type of like synergy within it, meaning like you have a, cl a classroom, the immersion experience with that that bathroom talk, the, the certain sensory things aren't always there. So I would like to see that advance a little bit more, which it is, which it really is. I, but are I think you, it's, it's valid. Are you as deep into that, Kevin, or was it just a paycheck? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, so I found Always the correct I, I, I have very limited experience with VR. Um, I tried it a few times as a viewer, like before that, and I found the experience deeply weird. <laughs> <laughs> My first experience with VR was like back in the late 90s, the Nintendo produced a type of like it was a kind of nes but it had like a goggle thing that yes the virtual boy your face and it, it rendered the graphics like um right john carpenter's escape from new york like in the beginning <laughs> sequence, where it's just like the outlines of things and dash lines and you know I, I didn't really think much of it um because i was you know I, I was, I didn't have a brain to think much of at that point. You know, I was a little kid. I tried the Oculus when it first came out and I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. But one of the problems is, you know, I'm like, I got a pretty severe like sight issue. And so wearing the VR goggles, kind of uncomfortable. So I didn't really yeah. mess with that too much. Um, then I get filmed for it and getting filmed for that is just like getting filmed for anything else. You just do the thing and then you go. Um, I think it would be really cool once I, like I haven't even seen the rendered finished product. Like oh, I, have, really? I have no idea. I have no idea what it, how it came out. Uh, hopefully I represented well. Hopefully I did a good job. No, it, uh, you did wonderful. It was so cool. So I had two, we had two little things we're working on. I'm giving a little sneak peeks, by the way, check out csceducation.com. a uh, little sneak peeks there. So one was this tour and it was kind of the early stages, not all the section. It was kind of like being in a digital world. Like there was a wall I couldn't go past cause they hadn't rendered some of the other areas yet, but the cultivation center, which you've talked about Galenus is the triple stacked one, which is really cool to watch. So they had it set up and you could walk through the building and you looked at all these things and you clicked on it. We also have set up, we were uh, a virtual classroom. So you put on the headset and I was pretending to be the teacher. We were kind of recording some demo video and there was a virtual classroom. It looked like a movie theater, like a small movie theater and all these we, me, like people exactly. who were all the account popped up and next to me, well, not next to me, but in the world was a giant video screen. And the teacher could kind of talk and then click or move the slideshow. So basically, the, when we're teaching class and such or videos into it, you're sitting there, but you're wearing a headset. And so it looks like it's an IMAX screen. And then you have all these people and you can see the little characters, the little avatars. And they had them all well done, by the way, all branded with CSC hoodies and logos. So every time everyone popped in, they had a uh, they had a branded shirt. I was really impressed by that little touch. Into there. <laughs> that made me laugh so hard. So, That's it awesome, was, actually. yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, so let's talk about the two two different points of this. You have virtual reality where you're completely immersed, and then you have this augmented reality yes, where they kind of you could be wearing prescription glasses, and you know you could be having legitimate. Like the point of it is not that you're immersing in the place; it's that when you're picking up the the potted plant something's telling you how much water when was all yes. the data from it you know on the side and so like to me that's also another version of education that could really sustain proper training values for a cultivator it's you know it literally as you're picking it up it's like this is not compliant to touch today <laughs> you know? yeah i mean that's what it's like there's these menu screens and you can literally like click them and such uh does that take away from it kevin though do you feel like you're too much or do you just want to have a plant in your earbuds and people leave you alone well i mean okay. so like augmented reality i think that's way cool like especially in the workplace but it has to you know, I, re I, I like virtual reality 
I want to take it off. I want to see it take off because I want to teach people in like Sweden. I want to teach people in like Australia. Yes. I want to teach people across the span of time after my own death yes. when I am immortal on the internet. That kind of what it is. Like it is. And that's really weird, right? <laughs> but it's also true. And so like that, it makes me feel some sort of way because I watched a lot of science fiction films as a kid. Yes. Um, but <laughs> I like it. Like, yeah, I like the option that I would have to do that. Augmented reality, also very cool. Very cool for like the workplace and like getting that raw, like, you know, heads up data. I'll feel weird if it like goes outside of the workplace and then just becomes like what I see all the time. I don't know, man. I, they used like, to look at me weird with, with the Google glasses on. They knew the camera was facing them. And so yeah. they wouldn't even, they just, it was bad. Even the Santa Claus at the children's picture at the mall was pretty upset about the Google Glass, you know? Yeah. And like, it just, it, it, it changed it. So in the workplace, it's different. You are on camera a lot of the time. You are, yeah. in, even in the highly regulated industry, you know you're going, your movements are tracked. So yeah. I see, feel like that personal space there isn't necessarily violated. But yeah. uh yeah, outside the in in the realm of walking around your neighborhood. To it, I remember there was a case in the early two thousands. There was a a French cyborg. I'd say that literally, the man had a camera implanted into the side of his skull. It was like having an augmented Google Glass like grafted yeah. onto his body, and you know, people for whatever reason, it just triggered the uncanny valley for them, and there was a violent reaction. That dude got. He assaulted in the street. He had to get the thing taken out of his head. I mean, it is a weird thing. I think it, it I want to trust. I, want I don't know. To it's trust. an interesting I want to. I want to believe, but there's this ape monkey idiot part of me that's like, oh. it's the same thing that goes oh, when I get on an airplane. So like, I know that like my perception is flawed in this instance. And so I want to see it develop. I also have some deep fear because I read too much of, you know, Fahrenheit 451 yes. early and uh, age, you know, like I read Ray Bradbury too early. And maybe that's maybe, maybe why I feel weird. About it. I don't think so. I think what we're talking about, you know, to is right at the forefront of cannabis right now. We're in an industry, especially in the cultivation, that has a combination of big tech money coming in, do it faster, mm -hmm. cheaper. And we have the old school, we'll use the stoner mentality or the hippie, but there's people who are, even if they don't fit the stoner stereotype, who believe in the very slow, nurturing, naturalistic, holistic Mother Earth connection. And there are people who look at it as giant agriculture and giant ag, big ag becomes machines. It becomes processing. We were just looking at some machines the other day, like these uh, pre-rolls that's about $48,000, but it makes 5,000 pre-rolls an hour. Like you can't pay someone that's well worth the investment. Um, I, but the idea behind a cultivator being able to, as you said, dusting glasses and looking at a plant and let's say it's connected to the, uh, some sort of, um, measuring stick that's in there that can tell you just by looking at the plant, what it's, uh, pH balance is or what its moisture content is. When you look at it, it just pops up next to you. Oh, it's low, needs water. That's pretty incredible. But our industry cultivation, they struggle, right? I, I know we are both, I think, ten, all three of us technologically leaning. Uh, but Dustin, you have, or Dustin, sorry, Kevin, you have, as I do in class, a lot of students who come to the Cleveland School of Cannabis who are like growers and they think about the plant and they think about all these things and they don't look at it as technological advancements and they kind of reject it somehow. Uh, and so where do you balance that? You know, and kind of both of you, your thoughts, like technological cultivation versus mother nature and giving back and this thing, which is becoming less and less, which makes it less sustainable as we talked about. It's a weird, we're at a crossroads yeah. right now. All we're right, at a definite right. crossroads. Here, here's my take on it. Okay. Um, if you go to McDonald's and you order a double cheeseburger, and if you go to a Michelin restaurant and you order a Wagyu steak, those came from the same cow, all right? The same genus, the same species, the same animal. What I'm trying to underline here is with the same product, there are differing levels of quality and enjoyment. I would, you know, you eat the McDonald's same burger because it sustains you, but you enjoy it less than something that was mm. actually taken care of, actually thought about, actually considered. 
I, you know, you can draw the same thing. Like mass produced wine is great, but you know, the best wine I ever had was the one that my friend bottled and it came from his backyard and mm -hmm. he worked on it with his hands. No one else. I know exactly what went into it. That's, there are levels of quality and enjoyment. So people come in and I have it from both sides. People come in as like, all right, let's like get him in the ground, pump this harvest out, toss it out. Make the quick 60, get moving. Um, and then there's people who are a bit more craft inclined. Neither is wrong. They are both correct in their thought. But there are levels to do this that are like, we talk about big agri being harmful to the, you know, the planet. You can still be, you know, apply capitalist principles. Whoa. And also, you know, be less harmful to the environment and you can if you actually consider the data and you kind of break free from the dogma of big agriculture's chemical farming perspective which was more 18th century more 19th century this is all fritz haber stuff we have a newer understanding of how horticulture works how organic horticulture works and how to do it as efficiently large scale as you would with your you know four thousand acre big fuck off, you know, like robot farm, <laughs> you know, like we, we can find a synthesis between this thesis and antithesis. That is the way generally history works out. There's a synthesis here. And that's what I try and teach is I try and teach that synthesis of the ideas of like, yes, you can make money. Yes, you can do a good job at the same time. And you reject neither, but nice. accept only what's good out of either philosophy. All right. This is some Bruce Lee shit. All right. You <laughs> This is what the foundations yeah. of Jeet Kune Do are, okay? You take what's good out of other philosophies, you apply it, and then you reject everything that doesn't work. That's a philosophy that I try and bring to with a lot of skills. Boom. BC, it's just, back to you. Well, it's just interesting, Dustin, because <laughs> if I was to, yeah, no, just, I don't know what to say after that. I don't know what to say. We got deep I don't uh, into that. Uh, well, here's the <laughs> thing. If you Google, like just right now, I just literally, as you were talking, Dustin, I'm Googling big ag, keg, big ag, cannabis two words that's all i typed yeah. into there not even agriculture big ag cannabis an entire list right now of google headlines is anti big ag in fact the very first one is op-ed get big ad out of cannabis in california large farms are replacing cannabis farms competing with big ag and federal legalization boo big ag boo big ag boo big ag so dustin the cannabis media we'll say it's a media driven thing so all the cannabis media even that was an la times article i got a new york post and i got a bunch of other marijuana moments cannabis business times articles every single one of them slants almost universally from the industry of cannabis anti growth anti big ag does that you know and you're a patient dustin we talked about craft growing before but i think kevin's right right there is a place for mcdonald's in cannabis of course there is and there is a and even place. today's McDonald's cannabis, by the way, is way better than 10 years ago McDonald's cannabis, right? I mean, just come on. Yeah, I I think the more important aspect of it is just the transparency of everything. So there is something about the way McDonald's did their marketing that doesn't make me feel like I'm getting undervalued when I buy something from them. Like, I feel like I get exactly what they told me I was going to get for the amount of money. And so that transparency to me is actually the ultimate goal. You can, you can, we can both be in the same game as long as we're both calling ourselves what we are. Um, and I, I just, I, I think that goes along with more with like, just normal, you know, brand recognition of like what your main goal is. I, I don't know. I, I think it's, it's, it's pretty simple. It's just, it's so weird how much sometimes they go against each other. It just, it strikes me as when every time I talk to the cannabis guy or girl, the person, the cannabis person who has been growing it and wants to have a plant in their backyard, they just hate industry. But I think there is amazingness that will come from it, right? There's good inventions, even if it's lower cost, lower grade, but still acceptable quality. Right. Who else invests the, the okay early adopters in technology don't usually get the value off of the technology that they early adopt. Oh, good point. You know, like they are paying an overtly higher price to experience whatever efficiency gain they're getting off of this tool that gives them the, the you know, like they can kind of they're 
what they lose in one place, they gain in another. Sometimes it's a loss leader, this efficiency, and they can make their money at other steps down the line. And so that innovation, you don't want to stifle the innovation and say, bring big bag out. I mean, there's huge innovations in terms of drones that are being done, and those can be applied to other aspects and other industries. There's huge, there's just, there's so much potential with just sharing knowledge in general that to me, it's just like, that's the ultimate goal. Everyone wins. I would also like to interject that um, what well, I do believe there is a place. I also believe that, listen, if you don't keep a firm hand on like the ultra capitalists going in there, mm. you don't keep them very well regulated and very well in line. It quickly can blow out of proportion. It right? hasn't it already? It does. Yes, exactly. So, and now it's just like, how do we adapt to this as smaller growers? And it's like, oftentimes people are turning back to that. Like, well, I got a back 40. I know what I've been doing and I'm going to grow like something smaller of higher quality. I think that is going to be the, the niche for people who are in the market. Like there is like, yeah, you know, it's crazy to say, but cores exists at the same time as your tiny little API, AI, whatever micro brew. And there is a place for it. And, you know, I just hope they don't, um, you know, well, it gets harder and harder. Or, or the environment. That's all I want. Well, just there's two things there. Cool, well, there's, <laughs> it, to go to the second point, well, there's two points there. It gets harder and harder. We've seen already more articles this year than ever before about cannabis companies shutting down, the small dispensary shutting down. You know, mm -hmm. I just actually saw an article about a microbrewery right here in Northeast Ohio shutting down just the other day. Uh, those shut down often. Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch, and Coors have not shut down, right? They roll out new lines. They got new sparkling beers. I just had that weird Budweiser next. That was bizarre. It was a crispy weirdly sparkling beer is bizarre uh so they're rolling out new products and microbreweries either make it or shut down anheuser-busch never shuts down right and then the other side of that is as the ultra capitalist and maybe a part of the issue the other big headline if you type big ag cannabis that comes up is mass producing carbon emissions sustainable packaging you know already having the genie out of the bottle and trying to be stopping be stopping trying to look at the sustainability damage that we're doing to the environment which you just mentioned kevin like we're the big ag is struggling a bit because they're mass producing right and mass producing means not as much thought into the little people or the after effects in two decades well no it actually just requires 15 percent more thought there it, it is requires 15 more thought. Thought. The, the solution has already been fucking found yes, all right 100%. we already have an understanding of where to go how to direct it and what to move to this yep. is we don't need to reinvent the wheel what are we gonna do with all this plastic use glass dummy yeah right? <laughs> what are you exactly. talking about what, oh no with all the packaging all the pack make it out of recyclable hemp plastic it's biodegradable we figured it out all right it's been figured out and why again, haven't they accepted they don't it? want to take that 15 percent more thought and that 20 percent more investment and put it towards something that is actually larger than themselves. That's exactly it. Because when they add that thought, now they have to compete on price again with the boutiques. And and and, sure. and yeah, exactly. And that's what, but that's what the, you know, again, they have that ability of saying, wow, we can sustain the lows maybe even better than what these, they have other value sets that they gain by still being on that equal plane, by still having that cost value, you know, I guess. Totally. So totally. then how do you feel about micro businesses in like Michigan? How do you feel about their model as opposed to say then, you know, Oklahoma where it's anything goes? I mean, like Oklahoma has resumed its title of the wild west. Oh yeah. I, and I love Oklahoma. <laughs> I mean, I am a man of contradictions and I understand that, but there's something <laughs> in me that just loves absolute freedom, but also, you know, realizes there's a responsibility of control. And so you have to take these two opposing things and wh where do we actually think about it? And where do we lie on this spectrum? If we're going to be writing public policy. We do have a duty to protect small businesses and people because they're primarily like who we're taking care of as, you know, the, the public. But if we're also setting policy, it's like we do want businesses and we do want people to come in money and we do want people to have jobs. But there is a way to balance this. And has anyone done it right yet? I'm not sure. There are cases. We have seen where things go very wrong. We have seen like, you know, <laughs> and we have seen where things have gone right. And it's um, 
sometimes confusing. It, uh, is, it is. It's hard. It's hard to figure out. Quagmire of ethics and all sorts of like, not just ethics because ethics are good. Ethics are important, but politics also requires a realistic base of, <laughs> you know, knowledge and thought and knowing how the world works. Yes, that's all you gotta say. Yeah, I yeah. Smash, we need yeah. to smash the two together, and it needs to be somebody much smarter than me who comes up with a solution. It does. <laughs> Uh, it needs to be somebody who's much smarter than me, because I will be the first to recognize my many flaws and limitations. <laughs> That's good. Self-awareness is the key to good business. There's an old adage that those who can do and those who can't teach. I feel like in the cannabis industry, it's actually not even the teaching <laughs> line I'm getting to. There's an old adage now. I think the new thing in cannabis is those who can grow THC and those – who can't uh, exploit other cannabinoids, Delta A, Delta 10, HHC. Uh, as a science-minded individual, someone, Kevin, who walks on both sides, where are you at with these cannabinoids of taking extra oxygen molecules and making THCO, taking hydrogen molecules and smashing it into dissolute and making HHC, um, THCV? I haven't even heard about that. I just literally learned that term. That's not true. So talk to me about this science of molecules and dissolates and why it's good or bad. I don't know your opinion. I'm curious. I'm someone who I've, I've consumed some, and now I'm kind of hitting pause. I feel a little okay. weird sometimes about it. Yeah. So, well, on the outside, this is like adding an oxygen molecule, taking away a carbon molecule. It's like, wow, this sounds like a lot of really complicated stuff. But chemistry, when you really fundamentally understand it, is not – you're not really doing that much. So creating these cannabis isomers, um, Delta-8, THCO, making all these other different things. Um, there is provenance. We have history of Delta-8 use in cancer trials going back to the 1970s. So, I mean, like, we have a pretty good historical provenance of, like, this is safe. Um, the other ones, you know, uh, have been on the market for less time and have had less... Well, just because the, you know, it's only been around for so long, so we need to learn more. I'm always a big fan of doing the research thoroughly before putting it into a person, right? Like before I give this to a person. Um, I haven't seen a lot of animal model tests like rats, rabbits, you, you know, chimpanzees, all that stuff. Uh, and with these exotic isomers. That said, I don't really have any reason to think they're unsafe. I don't really have any val I like I don't have much of a reason to think that this is a anything more than a neutral thing, you know. Um as far as like exotic cannabinoids like THCV, CBN, CBC, cannabichromine, you know, uh, all this stuff. That's all these are all naturally occurring. Right. Like it, it, it's already in the raw cannabis flower. You take it off. It's going to have some trace element. When you were getting in a concentrate, they're just removing that through a you know, distillation process. Uh, you know, that specific cannabis uh, cannabinoid. And then they give it a little concentrate. I have no reason to think that these are bad or that it makes you a bad grower. I think most of the time people who are selling these things are like just trying to adapt to the market. Or I just, you know, trying to like, all right, I can't compete with uh, insert big corporation, you know, here. So I don't get wayward media suit. But, you know, like, no, it's the best thing to happen like, to us would be a lawsuit. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. I'll and, take that lawsuit. Okay. <laughs> just Please. Enough. It was, it was anyway, a question of the show. It's like, so they can't compete in one way. So they're trying to compete in a different market, which is understandable as far as like people – being distrustful of it. Which happens. Now we have exited the realm of chemistry and entered psychology, <laughs> all right? Because you being distrustful of this thing, like that's a feeling, isn't it? Feelings are not always informed by facts. Yeah. I just talked about how earlier, like when I put on VR goggles, I get like a primitive boom, reaction. Feelings are a representation of our own perception of this thing, right? So we're looking at this THC, oh, we're looking at this Delta A, Delta, whatever, whatever. Um, and your perception of it, that's important. That's what informs your feelings. And so how do we change our perceptions? All right. Well, experience, seeing other people do things safely, having time and experience around something, 
All right. Uh, education definitely changes perceptions. Absolutely. You learn more about it, you know, and that does help, you know, those perceptions. Are people right to distrust it? No, I, I, I don't see a lot of evidence to say that it's the right to distrust. I don't also see a lot of evidence. I just see it as neutral. It's well, it's neutral hey, to me. <laughs> I mean, let's let's circle back to that that article on big ag and cannabis and mm -hmm. let's, you know, every single person in every single one of those articles was negative. So yes. what is people's perception supposed to be at that point? Uh, you know, like it's, they haven't, you have to almost deep dive to find the argument against that and, or just go to the corporation's website, I guess. And, and yeah, give you a mission point. statement that says how yeah, important yeah. this is to them. They want yeah. someone write three lines. Don't worry about that. They got they got their marketing so, campaign on point. So where does that emotion get dictated by someone else other than the actual chemistry? Right. So like how you know there is the influence of like I swear to God I didn't mean to say the influence of influencers, but it's what came to mind. Now, it's like the influence, what it is, is changing perceptions or adding new perspectives or bringing your unique attention and perspective to something else. And so, like, that can come from corporate levels, that can come from individuals, media, whomever, whatever. And mostly, it's not that. Mostly, it's people that people actually know. You know, yes, it's yes, mostly 100%. not some fucking dude on Instagram. It's mostly your cousin, Pat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, and it goes so back to this whole era. Yeah, and that, I think the way that these perceptions will be altered or corrected or however we want to phrase this, but it's just more exposure, more time, you know, how, like... What is it? Mishulam discovered THCP like two years ago, you know, and it's already on shelves. People have not had a lot of time with this thing yes. to really form an opinion. And that's why as like a scientist, I, I try and approach things with a neutral mindset until there's enough data to justify a decision one way or the other. And if I'm wrong, I just change <laughs> I just correct course. That feels like okay. a very rational line of thought for 2022. I feel like that's not how we think. We go instant reaction. We never change our minds. And we actually, when people present facts to us, we dig our heels even further and say, fuck your facts. I am right. It's, it's weird these days. It almost sounds like, by the way, Kevin and Dustin, you're both saying the cannabis media has an agenda and that they may be trying to influence people against big agriculture, right? Of course, there's negatives to it. But there are, as we talked about, the positives. I think in one of these things will be more legalization, of course, is going to bring more doctors, of course, is going to bring more scientists who, of course, are going to find all the other cannabinoids and they're going to find new ways. And so, of course, it's going to happen and it's going to get really, really big and really, really hectic and uncomfortable. And then it's going to filter down and some of those big boys are going to make mistakes and get busted. But all the way, it's a bunch of finger pointing and I told you so's and at the uh -huh. end of the day, like smoke it if you got it. Enjoy well, yourselves, relax. Like we don't have right. a bunch of paranoid, upset, freaked out stoners because of essentially influence. Like influence to Kevin's point, people telling you this is bad. I mean, I didn't we it. talk? Didn't uh, Dr. Humant Bid kind of talk a little bit about that? About that need to isolate some of these things and test against certain certain things, test against certain prescriptions, test against certain, mm. you know, and so. To me, that is where it's really going. Like, yes, we now know about this, but until I start seeing, you know, legitimate scientists actually doing that to find yeah. some of these other things, I, that's when I see we make a huge difference in the industry. I, or first off, I love Dr. Bid. I'm teaching, yes. uh, of course, he wrote, like, it, it, him up rules. I love, Isn't I he love amazing? That. I love yeah. talking to that guy every time I get the chance. Uh, but, I think it's episode it's, nine or ten of Because Cannabis. Check it out. Subscribe to the takes playlist me somewhere. Four hours to digest them after I leave him. Like I have to. Like I really. It, yeah. Like I'll be walking yeah. to the mailbox and I'll be like, "Damn, he just got me again with another <laughs> point." Like he's exactly. so good at it. So good. Um. So to your point, you said that this is like an enlightened, uh, a different way of thinking for 2022. I'm writing a course right now about science as philosophy all right i'm writing a course right now and it's for the harrington institute i'm calling it don't get fooled again 
And it's uh, it's going to be a course on like the philosophy of science and finding truth and exploring mystery and what that means. And then setting forth those protocols of like, don't get married to your mistakes. Here's the scientific method. I explore it from this point of view. You don't just have to like, great, I discovered, uh, you know, um, the caffeine molecule through science. But, you know, you can also use the scientific method to like explore your own perceptions, explore your own thoughts, to like, ex you know, make choices in your everyday life, to look at things, collect data, form a hypothesis, test it out, analyze and interpret your results, and then, hey, you form a conclusion. If you're wrong, change course. If you're right, keep being right. You know? <laughs> so, but, like, science is philosophy, and I approach life as a scientist. And then you should do it. First of all, a shout out to that. How'd you get that gig? No one ever calls me oh. like, hey, write a cool science philosophy course. I'm like a digger. No one just calls me. to do a thing, and I did a thing. I'm it is on. awesome. Uh, shout out to you Brian Adams. Do thing, so now I'm doing a thing. Yeah, a couple episodes ago, uh, because cannabis, Brian Adams, Harrington Institute, Director of Education. Got to give Blaze and Enthused a shout out as Ooh. well. Check out Brian Adams' new podcast. I'm sure you'll be on there at some point, Kevin. Maybe. I don't know if you get that invite. We're trying to get that invite too to get on Blaze and Enthused. Uh, Brian Adams, I, Director. I listened to the first show and it was awesome. Marisol. Yes, on Marisol, it was such, and, and Dr. Will, uh, you know, Dr. Bridget was on there too for a couple minutes. It was, it was awesome. Uh, Kevin, I, uh, would be remiss if I got you here. We didn't talk a little bit about some of the, you know, uh, we, once not that long ago, I watched Kevin make a tincture. All right. First of all, how do we say T I N C T U R E? How do you say the word? You tell me how you say it. Oh, it's that extra N. Dustin says a tincture, like the sound in the middle. I just okay. like tincture. Like there's the I am N. from Appalachia, all right? I have very much an accent, and I have to focus on not using the accent. I Back home, they would call it like a tincture. But Is the CT hard, though? Like that's the point. Some people here's give that cert. Here's, here's how you get out of this. This is a social trap. You just say it really fast and no one questions it. <laughs> oh, no, that is. And then I move on. <laughs> I will give you tried and true. I have probably told this story before, but I've been a wedding DJ many, many times, and I get some difficult to pronounce names. And so you have one time you have to get them right. It's the bridal party introduction. And there are some times you just don't know what to do. And so you have two options, both combined for maximum effect. You say the last name very fast, and as you're saying it, you turn the music up as you're saying it. So, and it's just too many clapping, and you're just going, say it quickly. Turn the volume up as you're going. It's a great way to get out of it. So I just Probably. struggle with that word. It's a one that I hear too many people pronounce. It's not like tomato, tomato, because no one says tomato except for like some Mario hardcore Italian guy, right? So very yeah. few people say tomato. So, but tincture and tincture go back and forth. So I recently watched yeah. Kevin make one on the fly, which is pretty funny to watch. I am always excited. Uh, Dustin and I's favorite thing is nebulization right now, just thinking about the new ways to extract it. Uh, uh -huh. As someone who both, maybe I'm going to assume you're probably sit on both sides of this fence. You're basically a both sides of the fence guy, Kevin. That's what we're learning today. I am neutral. Yeah, you're very neutral. You're freaking the Switzerland to cannabis, uh, Swiss cannabis, as we say it. All these cool changes to the extraction techniques and the way that people are going to be able to consume it, including a nebulization level right now, no combustion at all, no fire. Uh, exciting? Like what coming down the road kind of extraction ways? Do you get into all these new ways to consume it? Are you still a roll up a joint kind of person wow. when you consume? Do you love modern, cool technology? Some people even, I had a whole conversation about edibles yesterday amongst hardcore consumers. And there's two anti, anti, anti edibles. Don't matter. No matter what you no, do, dear. but they're still consumers like every day, but they just won't touch an edible. Do you, float around the different choices, Kevin? I know Dustin's we've heard. Um, Do you float around or are you like a one type of form? Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I got a way to explain. All right. I, the, the human mind seeks novelty by no. default. That's one of the things we know about psychology. The human mind explores novelty. So when the new thing comes around, I always try the new thing. You know, I'll give it a shot. I'll do it once or twice. And um, usually if I like it, I'll incorporate it. If I don't, then I won't. But like um, I am in my actual life outside of seeking novelty, kind of a slow adapter, right? 
I smoke, I smoke bombs. All right. This is a thousand year old technology I'm using. Okay. <laughs> this is, I was like, I it's like, pro bong too. Pro bong over here. Pro bong. Hell yeah. I, but also like, I will, like I also have a dab rig in this room somewhere. You know? like, I I'm, owned I'm a, all about novelty. I owned a head shop. So I, I got it. If I just look to my left over here, there's about 35. Fucking what are you going to do? You know, I know, you know exactly. It's it's something get, something you just get a bigger toe. Really I'm really even happens. more simplistic these days. I am a paper and roll it in the paper person, which is not even – that's beyond your invention, Aries. It's dawn of time level shit, right? Can, can I also address your second point? Yes. Sir. Sir? Nebulization, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk <laughs> Sir? Yes, uh, you may right, hand right, the right. mic, where well, the mic is literally figuratively being tossed to you. What, what I am excited about, nebulizers are very cool. Very cool. You give yourself a little spritz and spray, you're on your way. We kind of have been doing this a little bit since, for the past 10 years or so. Um, what I'm excited about, and this is, it's not for recreational use. Like what I'm about to describe, so what I'm very, it's not. It, what I'm very interested is in the application of injectable cannabinoids. Yeah, I want to explore options of like a cannabinoid drip, as opposed to morphine drips in hospitals yes. for pain, uh, for people going through leukemia treat or like cancer treatment when you're having like like honestly, if you could have a type of injectable cannabis cannabinoid iv bag that's really exciting as far as medicine is concerned much more so uh to like nebulizers are really cool because it's fast action you know you get boom that's why they use them for asthma attacks right it's super fast action uh in the bronchioles of the lungs it's very and that's great for people like i can throw that in my bag in case I have a whatever, whatever situation, I can just make sure. And dosed care. every time to a certain thing, you know, five milligrams, five milligrams every time. The exact dosage. Absolutely. And when it comes to the medical perspective, what we know about pharmacy, the medical dose is the most effective dose, with the least amount of drug involved, right? So that's okay. the effective medical dose according to pharmaceutical science, right? And so something that has precise dosing, Something that has, you know, precision. We, we know exactly how much. We know exactly how whatever. That gets me very excited from a medical perspective. Because, like, we all kind of came to cannabis because we were, we had something wrong. I don't know, boredom's a disease too. But most people come because they have some sort of illness. And if we are going to be medical marijuana, if this is our stated objective in the name of the thing, well, then we have to pursue this yeah. in the most medically correct way. And then we do our little rec stuff on the side for funsies, but we should direct research towards things like that. Um, a research study just came out that said that cannabinoids are more effective than opioid derived medications for, it was um, skeletal muscular pain and fracture. Most people who consume opioids are because some sort of musculoskeletal fracture in the past. Got, I got hit by a snowplow. All right. How about that? Like that, and that was one of the things where they asked me if I wanted to take certain drugs, and I was like, I already smoke. I don't need no thanks. But if we are going to be concerned about public health, then we need to be concerned about public health and act accordingly. Pop. The problem is dollar bills. The problem is big <laughs> ag. The big ag sees, if you look at any sales statistics, it's medical and then it's rec, 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 rec. And so money is going to dictate research, which is going to yeah. dictate funsies and not seriesies, as you kind of call it. Right? I mean, that's right, Dustin? I think so. I I definitely think that's in a lot of things the case until the medical happens to fall onto the funsy market by accident and then it that changes everything you know happen. and so then my next question is 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 that the point when you finally start seeing deaths from cannabis is that the point when you know it's the the form and you know whatever that it's just it's in a different something's not I right. actually have a great response to you okay um so as far as resulting deaths from cannabinoids, I want, uh, I do this in my class all the time. Take two fingers right here, put it on the back of your neck and feel up towards, up towards your spine. You're going to feel a bump on right there. Yeah. And then you're going to move up another two inches. There's a four inch strip. There's a brain structure called the medulla right there. The medulla 
has no cannabinoid receptor sites in it. It has plenty of other drug receptor sites. This medulla, it this four inch strip is what keeps your heart beating and what keeps your lungs inflating and deflating and bringing in O2 when you are breathing and keeps your smooth muscles and your gut moving. It's all of the life support function that your brain can't spend all the time thinking about, right? Because it has other more important shit to do, like look at your phone and check yes. a Twitter, okay? But since we have no cannabinoid receptor sites there, it's what makes it excessively hard for us to overdose on cannabinoids. One of the things that people are afraid about, and I can understand, because a lot of injectable drugs are very dangerous quotient to them. Absolutely, totally understand. Um, but because of this brain structure, and it's just incredible blessing, um, you would still need insane amounts of an injectable in order to overdose, we're still talking the leagues of like leaders and leaders of injection, yeah. you know, uh, which would just be unfeasible for somebody who's just like, I want to get as high as God, you know, like somebody, if we're getting in the rec market, it's a very odd thing to go out and buy like three liters of cannabinoid suspended saline solution to inject into your neck or whatever. It's just yeah. not really going to translate as well. I feel um, like. Go ahead. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, surrounding our brain, we have we have something called the blood-brain barrier. It's a membrane of lipids and fats uh, that kind of surrounds the brain as a protective cushion. Yes, but also it is kind of a filtration matrix. Blood goes to our brain, but in that process of getting to the brain, since the brain has very specific requirements, it's a piece of electrified meat that has come up with all philosophy and science, right? So it has some, it's like a very expensive aquarium fish. And so this blood brain barrier filters and makes the brain blood clean into its specifications. That blood brain barrier is very important as a lipid bistructure because it allows drugs to get across or be filtered out. One of the reasons why uh, cannabinoids are like so effective when they are paired with a lipid is because it can cross that easier. Will that, will it be as effective, uh, like a nano emulsified injectable? I don't know how the technology is going to form, how it's going to be carried, how it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, brought across the blood brain barrier. I mean, the carrier method could be like, if I was going to identify a variable that might be harmful, the carrier method would be the thing I worry about as far as safety. But as far as my understanding of like, which again, I'm very flawed. <laughs> you know, as far as my understanding of biology and chemistry and psychopharmacology, I think we're going to be okay. Well, it, it brings it back then to user error. It's the same concept as back in college. Everyone, well, maybe not you, but I did. I didn't do it, but we heard about it. Trying to like pour liquor straight uh, into the rectum because it's instant absorption and you can oh, sure. OD and instantly. So, but that is not a cannabinoid overdose. That's more of a user error. Like it's not the intended consumption rate. And there probably will be uh, if there aren't already cannabis suppositories. I can't imagine there's there not. Are, yeah, probably, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So there has to be. So, but that in general, but to your point, the carrier method, whatever that may be even if it is a saline solution type it's not there's always a recommended dosage so if you go beyond that but that's what you see and kind of as we start to wrap up here and i'm uh, let's focus on this for a minute i'm always nervous when we go on to different you know facebook sites and all these things and these medical patients are complaining about not having 500 milligram or a thousand milligram single dose edibles and my brain is like wow that's a lot so if that's where they're at now what happens when people demand 2000 milligram edibles, five, th like 500 to a thousand milligram edible is a tremendous amount to consume. That should not be a dosage size. Like you will get disagree. too much. Uh -oh. Heavy disagree. All right, bring Heavy it. Disagree. Because it. you don't have pancreatic cancer, BC. And that's why you think this is an inappropriate dose. Yeah, that's true. I don't think this person is. That's a valid point. A valid you point. You have an MS, you, look, you can walk through a thousand milligrams like the Incredible Hulk. Fair right? enough. Like, yeah. The medical patients have different needs than the recreational market. And this is where we're going back to. And guess what? People who have this like really serious medication and looking for 5,000 milligrams. These are the people that like an injectable would actually be the solution. Yeah. Because it has like a hundred percent bioavailability as opposed to when you take an edible yes. and you get 12%. Have you ever had a terrifying edibles experience? Like the oh, worst yeah. 
No, you like know, more than know. like some of the hardest hallucinogens I've ever accidentally taken over my career. Never on purpose, anyone. But so. Yeah, I know. Accidentally and taken that. You only what? got 14 percent of the potential THC oh, at shit. maximum 14 percent absorption in, into your. Oh my body. god! Can you imagine what the other 86 would be like? That would be. <laughs> So like a thousand milligram ringer solution kind of like injectable is not going to be an experience you want to take unless you are like in the fight for your life. Yes. That's, a <laughs> you know? point. That's a wonderful way to look at it. Though. I really appreciate you telling me that and bringing me down on that because that is a really amazing. I love learning. That's a really amazing way to look at it because I don't have those things. And so I look at it from, you know, I'm always more pro adult use. It makes sense to me. I think of it as a vice as much as I do a medicinal aspect. So thank you, Kevin, for that. Cause sometimes you need a, a, uh, a check, right? It's self check. You, you need to, I do this all the time. You ask why I'm not that serious is because I approach life from a basic principle that my initial reaction is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> my entire life is based on like my initial thought. That's probably like social programming. Let me actually think about this thing before I form a perception or, you know, or that first thought that's usually me. Like I have post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. So I have to analyze and be self-aware of all of my feelings and perceptions yes. all the time. And so that's why you got to don't take that first thought so seriously. So that, you know, usually the first thought is somebody else's thought, thought for you. Yeah. <sighs> you think about that? Usually that first reaction, somebody else's thought they gave you. Now we're having cannabis conversations. Now we're getting deep. It took us 55 minutes to get here, but now we're just like a smoke sesh going deep inside, uh, inside the brain, Dustin. It's honestly, this was such, I had, I had such a blast. This has been, I, I really didn't know what to expect. I really, we had some tech issues in the beginning and you know what the, the universe came through and we really, this was just absolute blast. Well, thanks buddy. It is. It's fun to uh, it's fun to catch up. I always enjoy talking uh, with you, Kevin. You got anything going on? We obviously we talked about the Harrington Institute working with the Cleveland School of Cannabis. Anything outside of there? You do anything fun uh, as we kind of wrap up here? You want to promote or talk about? Uh, nothing that I need to promote or talk about. Follow me on Instagram, Kevin W. Roach. Uh, Roach is spelled R-O-C-H-E. There's no A. And by the way, BC, I yes, had to apply a bit of mindfulness. Ooh. You, you, you say my name, Roach. All of it, every time? I'm American. <laughs> it's Roach. I could call you Roche. So it is Roach with a hard CH into it? Yeah, buddy. Like yeah. the bug? All right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it how you want to say it. Know, it's only been like four years. Thank you for correcting me after four years of, of, of that kind of thing. <laughs> All right, Dustin Kava, nice to see you on the show today. My name is Mr. <laughs> Wyman. We've also, enjoyed. I'm not uh, shaming you. Literally, everybody does this. All right, well, I get it. As someone with W E H M A N, uh, my name, uh, Weeman is the most common mispronunciation of my last name. Dustin, ever Kava? Does anyone ever get that wrong, or pretty much Kava? Do they know it? I you always just say, you know, just remember the saying, Dustin Kava is hotter than lava, and you'll be pretty good. Oh. I really hope you've never said that out loud. Every day. Wow. <laughs> Fucking wow. <laughs> I better play some outro music before this thing just goes off the rails. We got Kevin correcting me on his name. Kevin Roach, uh, by the way. Kevin Roach from the Cleveland School of Cannabis and the Harrington Institute. Uh, psychology and science combination. That's a class, by the way, the Harrington Institute. You didn't know you were getting. That's going to be a fun class uh, into there. Cleveland School of Cannabis, obviously, CSC Education. Check us out. Uh, we'll put Kevin's Instagram in there. We need a few more followers. We need a few more followers on Because Cannabis. Click subscribe below. Click subscribe for us. Every Friday, 4.20 p.m., a brand new Because Cannabis show uh, is out there. Don't forget to follow us socially at MeetWM, M-E-E-T-W-M, MeetWM. Uh, Wayward Media, that's our final little plug, wayward.media. Got some fun things uh, we're going to announce soon. Dustin's been working on some great stuff for the channel. Anthony Trav is always out there uh got some maybe we'll get a philosophy and science podcast with kevin roche going on there his alter ego onto there <laughs> uh don't take yourself too seriously don't, because don't, cannabis don't, that serious. <laughs> don't consume very seriously all right everyone have a wonderful week we'll see you guys next week thank you guys